We have some other meetings here, don't we? I hope. Okay. There's one deacon. Any other meetings here? All right. Yes, David. And so it's a, a special time to be able to accept not the sign that is people called by the called by God, but also we're recognizing that people here today. And so Ralph, you know, you've been called to serve as a deacon, but uh, it's a special honor, and yet <coughs> We need to have you talk into the microphone or hold it in your hand okay. so the audience can hear, please. It's a privilege, and yet it bestows no special privilege. You're called to serve, and the word diakonos is actually a servant. And they were taking care of physical needs. And so that's really what we're asking you to do, take care of physical needs, but it's also a spiritual need that is to be ministered to. In this congregation, there are many who are hurting, maybe they've lost loved ones, maybe they're sick, maybe they need some help around their home, whatever it may be, we're here to serve. And when I say we, I'm referring to the elders and deacons and deaconesses in this church. So, what about the character qualifications? We read about those in First Timothy chapter three. If any of you want to turn your Bibles, it's uh, there in verses eight through ten and verses twelve and thirteen. So, one of the things that a deacon is to be is reverent. Well. We don't really know too much about what reverence means, so um, it's to recognize the seriousness of this calling. Okay? Not to be double-tongued. In other words, not to be a hypocrite. Not to say one thing and do something else. But to live your life in a consistent way with what you believe. And not given to much wine. Well, what does that mean? I thought we didn't believe in drinking alcoholic wine. Well, uh, here it says not given to much wine. We would consider it to be like not to be um, a glutton. You know, the deacons used to go and visit all of the, the flock. And of course, in the Eastern culture, you don't just go and visit, you sit down and eat and fellowship together. So don't be a glutton. I don't know if there's any, any concern about that here. But uh, not to be greedy for money. So be honest in all of your dealings. Not cheating people. Not some sort of gambler. Holding the mystery of the faith. In other words, to believe and to practice sound doctrine and do it with a pure conscience, practicing again what we preach. Be the husband of one wife, a one woman man is what it actually means in the original. So uh, I don't think we have to be concerned there, but it's to be faithful to yourselves. And then it says, rule your children and household well. In other words, it's your call to be a leader in your home and in the church. And then in Acts chapter 6, verse 3, it gives two more. It says, full of wisdom. In other words, practical applying of knowledge that God has given to you and the skills that he's given to you. And full of the spirit. To be spiritually minded and to be dependent upon the spirit. And so these are all the qualifying characteristics for a deacon. And we have recognized that in you, and so we're here to set you apart for that special office. So if you would kneel, and the rest of us will kneel with you here, and just put our hands 
Um, well, Father of Heaven, we are so grateful for this man that you have called to be our servant for your people. And we would ask you, Lord, that a special measure of your spirit would be poured upon him this day and each day. We know we realize that it's not a one-time thing, but we need to every day commit ourselves to you and invite the Holy Spirit to come and take control of our lives and to use us in serving others. So Father, I thank you for my brother Ralph. I pray that you'll continue to bless him in his home. Bless his dear wife, and bless his children, Lord. We know that they have a burden to, to have their children with them. And I just pray that you would hear the longing of their hearts and grant that request. And so, Lord, as a church family, we just set him apart for your service today. And we're grateful for the fact that he has heard your voice speaking to him. He's come back into the fold. And I pray, Father, that you will just use him in mighty and powerful ways. So bless him and bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name.